tonight, I'd like to ask for a, uh, a motion to come out of executive session. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. A motion to seal the uh, minutes of executive session. Uh, second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, then, Mr. George, uh, if I could ask you to call the roll. Thank you. Here. Karen Carlson? Here. Karen McGee? Here. Anna Duxbury? Here. Glenn Shibley? Here. Lynn Waters? Present. Lucas Vaughn? Here. Okay, uh, and Mr. Spearman, if I could ask you to lead us in the pleasure of your business, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, help our council achieve a strong desire to do good, be honest, serve others, and faithfully fulfill our obligations to our constituents, neighbors, friends, and family. Help our council to be ethical in all of our dealings and fulfill our obligations to our community. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you could review the emergency evacuation plan. <coughs> The uh, two exits in the rear and just go to the right or left. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, as always. Okay, uh, the uh, Mr. Manager presentation of the police station slash human services building is next on the agenda. Yes, sir. Uh, at this time, I'll call up our uh, chief of police and our Director of Human Services, Frank McDonald, and, uh, Director Sherman. Good evening. Good evening, sir. We, uh, put that, we gave you a couple packets here. I've noticed that it's very hard to hear. The modern mics are not Hello. 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 <laughs> so we spent the last two weeks um, after we had come up with initially to present a proposal meeting with architects. Um, in your packets, you should have found over the weekend uh, sort of a, one of the world about how we arrived back at 12 million, um, which obviously was a bigger number than we first thought. Um, so we went back, met with several architects, and really found that we couldn't do it uh, for less than 12, right in the 11 million dollar range. Um, learned a lot, um, but really realized there's value in the project that we hope you see. You know, at 12 million, you get two buildings for the price of really what was one in 2014. You look at the first um, part of the packet here, the financials are actually less than they were in 2014. Uh, the first year of that bond debt service was at 920,000. Um, this year, with a, a lower interest rate, we're actually around 805 to 880,000 in that first year of that debt service. So actually you get two buildings for the price really of one from the last time, 2014. Um, and we think it's really valuable. I mean, the cost of building a new PD we found in the range of 375 per square foot. So you can take that new construction and apply it to the human services building, it comes down considerably to 250 million. And then our retrofit of that building is, is obviously a lot less than a square foot. Okay. Um, Mrs. Shirtloff, would you like to sure. add? Uh, I think what we're looking for tonight, we know that this whole process was very quick because when John first proposed his capital budget, um, you know, it was too high. And when he approached me about combining with the buildings, we do a lot of work with our police force. And because Yes, while there are there is a senior center, there's a Department of Human Services, adult daycare, there's a program for folks with developmental disabilities, case management. Um, so bringing all that together seemed like the right thing to do. Um, I think that what we're looking for is permission 
to go forward to at least get it on the ballot. We have not spent any money for drawings because it seemed kind of silly to do that unless we knew at least there was an opportunity to get it on the ballot in November. Uh, which we do have a marketing strategy. The people that we'll be working with for the drawings um, and that kind of thing um, have already presented us with a marketing strategy. I can tell you that the people from my facility are very excited. They don't want to move from Wood Street because it's so convenient for lots of people to get there. I mean, we have people that walk there, we have people that take the bus, we have people um, that have vehicles, that kind of thing. So it is more, even though it's not in the center of town, it's in the most populated end of town. Um, clearly, you know, it's a big decision, but I think that since we've been at trying to rep do our building, and have gone to Flat River, invested money that we received from a, uh, a federal award through Jack Reed's office, wasted $200,000 over there, and then had to use the rest. I think that we're pretty aware of what we need, other places that probably are not as appropriate. I know that Councilwoman Carlson had some concerns about transportation. Actually, the transportation will be less because the buses won't be there. And the monitors, and that's a big problem for us right now because sometimes they're not too respectful of the fact that we have elders and we have people with disabilities, and they seem to send the message down that the police are there watching, and then they go slow. Um, so, actually, there'll be less traffic. As presented in your packet, there is a road, existing road, behind the ball field that the police will be able to access only egress and access, so we won't have sirens running through the, the neighborhood and that kind of thing. Um, we're pretty friendly with most of our neighbors. Matter of fact, they we help them in one way or another. They either come to the facility for services from the social workers, or they come for activities, etc. So I'm pretty confident that we would be able to um, make a good case for this particular uh, building. Again, we're asking that it be put on November's ballot so that we can get ready to go. We're, we're championing the country at getting ready to get these people out there and stop that marketing campaign. Okay, I have a question. Okay, you guys know, both know that I absolutely think you both need new facilities. We know that, and I'm, but I just have to play devil's advocate just a little because that's me. <laughs> um, and um, oh, speaking of densely populated, so I know last time, well, I don't think last time that there were any real neighborhood meetings, you know, like if you planning would make the person, like you, the applicant, send out your letters, and since it is such a densely populated area, one of my big concerns is egress and ingress. I can see trying to go down Wood Street to South Main at 4.30, and a solid wall of traffic's trying to go down towards Dave's, and you can't get a cop car out. I mean, I've been, luckily I've always come the other way, so I usually don't get stuck in that traffic. The backup is pretty awful. Um, plus, I know you are going to egress, or ingress, well, maybe just egress, to Sandy Bottom, and I figured out where that, it's like a little pathway right now, right, a little bridge, right? It's a road. Yeah, well, you can't tell it's a road unless you know it's there. Um, Sandy Bottom can get really dicey too at times when it's all backed up, plus going back, you know, each way. So my concern is traffic, and are you thinking about putting a light at Sandy Bottom there to stop, you know, an, an emergency light? So if somebody's coming down, right, to trip it. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have issues coming out of the PD now as it is on Main. And that's pretty heavily traveled, so if we have to leave there in an emergency way, we can go out. Can go out. So I don't see an issue too much. I know that, that 430 traffic is pretty good, but if we punch the road, it out, just sits there. The bottom, yeah. yeah, I mean, going towards Main Street, South yeah. Main Street, not mm -hmm. the other way. So um, I think you, so our patrols would avoid that area, they go back and around. 
Yeah. But are you going to do a neighborhood meeting of some we, sort? We could, I'm sure, you know, if, if the residents wanted it, I'm sure we'd do an information campaign. There was some people saying, you know, that that, that area is oh. populated, but to me it's no more populated than our PD area. We have houses adjacent to us. We have a church right next to our parking lot. Well, I, th I, I was also thinking where the, the roads are configured right there in front of the senior right. center. So I think we'd look yeah. at improving that area. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are you going to do with the school buses? That, I mean, it's not my call. I've talked to the uh, school department. Um, I'm not sure they're in love with the thin building behind uh, past building. But I would think across the street might be suited to that area if you bring the school department's uh, physical plant into the same building with oh. the actual school department. This is a course of action. I wouldn't speak for them. Um, I've talked to them a little bit. Or the police station. You know, you've got the other school down in uh, Oak Haven that's open. So I think there's some options there. Um, okay. And um, have you looked at any, if Wind Street, because of the traffic study, which I hope would be done, a real, you know, a real traffic study, like if you went in front of planning, Russ would say, Mr. Frost would say, you've got to have a planning study probably. Um, have you looked at any other properties? I mean, the one that comes to my mind is behind Burger King. Right. I can't believe they're not desperate enough to just practically give it to us. Yeah, and that's, wouldn't uh, you be on a better bus route if you had both buildings by Burger King? I know it's got a wetlands issue, but so, you know, job is the historians. I think that there's been, a, over the years that I've been around, there's been a number of plans that have put into play, and that was one of them. Yeah. That was going to be the central um, town office, if you will. But again, to me, it's more costly because now you have to purchase the land. You already own the land. Well, that's true. I'm just thinking they have to be really desperate. Well, you know, I'm not. I don't know about that. Of the desperation, but I think when we have existing building, we have existing land. It's town land right. across from our parking lot. So that, to me, would say. Up that financial cost. Yes, I think so. Right. Well, the other thing is, I know when RGB did the study for OK, then, right, it was $8 million to build new, but it was 12 to renovate, or 10 to renovate. $2 million more to renovate. $10 million more to renovate. So I was thinking, uh, $2 million more to renovate, sorry. Um, are you going to look at renovation versus? That's all in your, in your packet. We, we will. Yeah, I know, but these are these are preliminary numbers, right? Well, well I mean, they did. Oh, they are pretty solid. That, that was my question at the end of uh, who gave you these numbers? Uh, pretty solid. RGB Architects, okay. uh, Northeast Collaborative, and um, right. Sakosha Associates, who okay. all they all built public yeah. safety complexes. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think I had read that, but I just wanted everybody to hear that. So we spent the last two weeks meeting with. The, a lot of them I'm trying to get at least preliminary numbers. Obviously, you can't get an in-depth study without spending right. money, right. Um, which we would do again to really know about the specifics of the project after. But I think we, can, we don't want to do that until after we go after a bond. We know that there'll be value in that. And once you have a bond, if that if it comes in more, there won't be any more money. That's right. <coughs> but they already know that. We don't want to undercut the value of No, I know, but I'm. I'm just, yeah. I mean, we went for a $14 million station two years ago, and now we're at well, we 12. 12, 12, two years ago. 12 two years ago. And the interest rates are lower now, actually. So the actual bond debt service would be less. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to be paying on the debt service till next mm -hmm. budget, right? right? Next fiscal we'll budget. Bond, so be, we won't issue the bonds until the um, fiscal 18. And what are we looking at, a two- to three-year window? for all this to be finished? Well, I think the Cox building will be built first, and then you move Pat's folks over, and the services over to that building. And then you look at PD. The good part is there's no lost continuity in the police department. Like Lincoln and Smithfield, they have construction going on on top of their operation. Right. So for us, we would just kind of be late in waiting, and you know, when Pat is out of her, her space. We could gut that to the bones, that building. The building is one level. 20,000 square feet, it will almost quadruple our size above ground. We have 10,000 square feet to feed fives underground, really, in basement. So that would be about 20,000 square feet one level if we build a courtyard. So if the roads need to be addressed, 
Is that in here? Because uh, I see building they, site. They, you know. in part of their um, project analysis, which was brief, but they, punching that road out behind that ball field is part of the plan. But I mean, also in front. Um, we didn't really that triangle like that coming front. in there. Right. I mean, you could put a light there, a flashing light, either side. I, I don't see us having an issue coming in and out of there, particularly if we want to use sandy bottoms on main ingress and ingress for official use only. Mm -hmm. We would probably try to avoid, particularly around the rush hour time, coming out that front way. And I have to tell you, you know, and the school buses can't help it, but they're tied into that rush hour stuff too. Oh, yeah. And when they're making turns, and if they're both coming from both, and they come from all three, I mean, we've had them stopped at all three, and that that adds to more information. Okay. So I think I think you're going to see less traffic than we Well, I mean, I'm which is great. You which know, is to me, and which is great. I just had questions that I had to ask. So, Mr. Gay, yeah, I've got a couple of comments. Uh, I'm absolutely in support of this. I mean, I was in support of the last time, and, and I'm, I'm fine with the voters going out and making that decision. Yeah. This decision's not on our backs. I think it's great that we're going to get two buildings for the price of what we were trying to get one for. I mean, I know it's a tough sell with, you know, raising taxes in order to, to, to fund this, but we need to take pride in our town. Our police station is deplorable, and we have a great police department, and we need to have a new building. And my point is that it's not going to get any cheaper to do this the longer we wait. I think the time is now, and I think that the, uh, I mean, I like the idea that the voters going to, you know, make that decision for us, but I am definitely in support of it. Uh, I think you've done your homework. I, I think it's a great idea about having that access at Egress Road uh, on Sandy Bottom. I wasn't aware that you could get by without building a bridge over that river. I didn't know they, would, they went by the river, but that's great because I think you're going to avert a lot of the problems with the South Main Street, 430 rush. It is a mess over there, but I think by you guys going out on the main road like, like South Main Street, it's a great idea. So I'm absolutely in support of it, and you have you know, my support. Hopefully the taxpayers can see. You're going to have a, a real good campaign to get out there and, and, and make these people aware and let them know that, you know, what's in the what's in title. And they did a good job last year, and it, it got defeated, not by a lot, but I'm hoping that you can really get out, get the word out, and do whatever resources you have to, to let the people know. Well, I think our mistake part of it was not having a project drawing and not spending any money on that. So we plan on doing some impact fees that we have, you know, sharing that and getting that, you know, assistance to help us with the media as well. We did a good job, I think, of telling a story about how our PD was in need and all the problems, but we didn't necessarily show the project. So we'll, we'll do a better job of that this time. Well, you absolutely have my support. Thanks, man. Uh, refresh my memory. Did, was there a location uh, last time around outside of the uh, price of swim land? Was there a location designated to? Uh, Wood Street. Was it? It, it was just going to be at Wood Street, right across the street. Right. We were going to take. You know, we we're going to bite into that land across Got the street, it. which is 20 acres. But so I think there's an opportunity maybe for the town if they want to down the road to see that as a complex. Mm -hmm. the town hall may have to move someday. We don't know. I mean, that's an area that. We did this project could be nice to support town expansion, whether it's ball fields or other buildings. And, and, and again, uh, for your draw up, uh, you, you have the uh, Human Service Building at uh, and Senior Center, four million three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then the police station at five million six hundred fifty thousand dollars, and which totals the uh, ten. And then you have an additional the other two million is for the dispatch uh, equipment, uh, furniture, uh, owner's bonding and owner's costs, and the uh, parking site development, uh, all, all combined to $2 million. So that, you're, you're, again, I've heard you, uh, $12 million, uh, you both stand pretty firm on that that should do it. Um, and as Mr. McGee said, uh, we are looking at two buildings that uh, are both needed, sorely needed. And maybe, hopefully, we'll get twice the support uh, going it this way that we got last time. I also like the fact that we own the land because I, I know I go by Brookside every day as I go to Water State, and uh, that's a huge section of land. And it's too bad we don't own it, but we don't own it. And uh, that would definitely, uh, and I, I don't know how desperate they are to sell it because it's been that way. Uh, Brookside Center coming soon. I think it's been that way. 
I don't know, I don't want to say 10 years. 10 years? But I bet you it's more like 15. No, no, 10 years. All right. You are, okay. I defer to Mr. Uh, Mr. Maybe 11, maybe 11 years. Okay. Maybe going to five. Either way, I like this idea. And then in the transition where the one uh, building gets done first, and then, with no uh, interruption, then the, the police building can get done. Uh, as you continue working on, on Main Street uh, in the interim, whether it's two years, two and a half years, whatever it would take. Uh, but owning it is good. Uh, I know that area very well. I've lived in Oak Haven 37 years. Uh, Wood Street, South Main Street, Sandy Bottom, Tioga Avenue, up to 117. That, as I said before, that's, that's a main sectional artery. It's like a heart. It's like the heart with the arteries going out and the, and the blood vessels. And I know that um, owning it and then just trying to take care of uh, where the school buses are going to go, that, that's two big pluses. That's a big plus owning it and then finding out where the school buses are going to go. Um, I know that nobody likes, uh, I, I don't know any neighbor that's going to be cheering in that particular area. And I don't know how many residents are. Sometimes, for the good of the town, whether they're happy or unhappy, um, it's, it's got to happen. Uh, good PR program is good. You know, so, so how they're not going to be bottled up um, in that general area. And I know the, the police have to get out. They find a way to get out with, with their lights, etc. cetera. Um, but I, I, I think it's a, it's a great location. And I think if we can do it for this 12 million, both buildings, uh, and tie in the, uh, I guess we're tying in the EMS, aren't we, Colonel? There is some opportunity, I think, even dispatch. I dispatch. Brown about doing a combined fire police dispatch. Okay. That's, that's going to take a little bit of. We've got the area, even if that's you know, part C, <coughs> further down the line. Uh, I think we the space is there space. and we own it. Okay. Uh, others that might want to. Excuse me. He's in support of the of the of the dispatch uh, yeah. examination. I think our, our contract runs the town pays for the fire dispatch to contract. It's about three hundred and eighty five mm -hmm. this year per year. Um, and a lot of that he spends on his personnel. But if we can do a combined police fire mm -hmm. dispatch center where you know his personnel and it's still contracted come in and work with us, I think interoperability you, know, you saw what's in the news recently about regional interoperability. Right. It is his building up. The Merck building is pretty antiquated when it comes to computers. It doesn't have computer dispatch. So even the simplest kind of data mining you want to get out of that, you're not going to get. It's really by hand paper. So it's an upgrade for them. Well, again, 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 going back to the location, it's it's uh, for the fire departments too. It's it's straight the heart heart. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Mr. Just, just Mr. before uh, you go on, with our architects, I'm sorry. We, did, we did bring in right. the fact that fire alarm dispatch, mm -hmm. they should configure that it make, within the building. It would make sense. So we tried to think of everything we could possibly think of. And I'd, I'd like to add on that note that the town currently spends about $400,000 a year for that paying for that service. Yeah. And so there would be some savings. Uh, with with the inclusion in the town facility. Okay, that's a good point too. Um, other council comments? Go right ahead. I did take Chief Bogley up on a tour when we were trying to get the police station last time, and, and I 100% agree. I also am concerned about the traffic, so I'm hoping that there would be a traffic study done. Um, I've sat in that line of traffic a lot. That's uh, my other concern. Um, the wetlands, that, that's not going to be an issue over there with that road exiting well, no, on Sandy Bottom? In 2014, when we looked at that site, and uh, Chief Bobby was pretty familiar with the 2010 floods, it actually didn't get wet in the 2010 floods. Down, <coughs> kind of cascades off down to the river, but surprisingly, it's, it's dry. We were the driest building in town. Yeah. We never lost power. We had no water at all. We all know it was water. Do you know how much the feasibility study is going to? You talked to RGP, I guess. But he, so A and E, you know, it can range for as much as you want to pay for it. I don't think the town should spend more than fifteen, maybe twenty thousand dollars on A and E. 
for a project to get this to get a building picture to do you know the interior layout and kind of work through the services she has and what she needs in St. Louis. I don't think it's going to be a crazy cost. Obviously, those other costs, you know, the bond is, is granted. We get the total, those costs will be rolled into a percentage for whichever architect gets the bid. Mm. So we would send it all out to bid on the $12 million. And then that, that whoever gets that bid is, you know, that's part of that. And you said impact fees would be used for that initially? We Can we use them for that, Bob? We checked with the solicitor his opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we checked with the solicitor. His opinion was that uh, we could use them in the event that the bond did not pass. Then the two departments would be responsible to replenish or uh, give the money back to the impact fee account out of their uh, general fund budgets, which we could handle in fiscal 18. So, in other words, they don't technically meet the requirement for using impact fees. We'd have to pay them back if we didn't get the bond. No, Is they, that they do. I'll explain it to you. Please. They do meet it, but the way the impact fee statute it doesn't take account of bond referendum where the money that's spent to try to plan and present to the public what this project will be like has to be spent before the bond is approved. So it's almost like <coughs> money that is spent conditionally on the assumption that it will be approved. And so then the question is, well, what happens if it isn't approved? And the only fair way to deal with it, in my opinion, uh, the law is silent on this, uh, is I think you have to pay it back into the impact fee fund. Because that's a fund that's held essentially in trust by the town, uh, holding money paid by developers and held on behalf of the public. So you have to replenish it if the, uh, if the bond referendum doesn't pass. And I think, um, I think that's something they're well aware of. Yeah. And, and, and let, let me uh, let me ask the question. Uh, approximately, again, the cost. If, if in fact you've been quoted nine thousand, right. five thousand. So we would have to in the big right in the big picture, uh, hopefully the bond would pass. But if the bond, for whatever reason, didn't pass, that that's a small amount <coughs> of money for it to be paid back by two of your agencies, uh, eliminating this or that within your budget. So I don't think that's, uh, and as long as uh, it can be done, and, and then even if it had to be paid back, I, you know, that's, that's minimal. Normally, these are considered construction costs. Yeah. So they fall within the scope of what is allowed uh, for impacts, impact fee expenditures. But um, I think if you're looking at it from a public information standpoint, I think the public deserves to know what this thing is going to be like. Right. And the only way to get there, uh, for them is to um, publish that. If they want to use the impact fees, I think the words I use were they do so at their own, own peril because if it gets rejected, they have to pay it back. So I want to make sure on the amount because I thought you just said about fifteen well, thousand, and then you just said five to nine or something. Well, no more. Which is it? No more than fifty. One uh, one company told us five. Another quarter us nine just on this initiative to try to, we were on the front end saying, hey, can you get us drawing for the media? Um, so I think you know, we wanted to spend more on media to do other things. We would get it out and see who the reasonable you know, architectural permits for the costs. We would go, we'd set a cap probably. Uh, we'd have to come before council to get approval mm -hmm. for anyone. So you would see those bids. One of the architects has already done on our last. Uh, approach, uh, attempt to get a, uh, a bond pass. We were linked in with the school, and the police, that was one, the police department's one, and everything failed. So they're pretty familiar with our building and the construct, which is going to help them when they're trying to figure out if police can take out the, you know, what they can save. So I would expect that that's going to save some money, too. And then they've done police work, and they've done multi-service multi buildings, so... All right, I just have, um, I want to make sure I understand this handout. Um, so then the increase to service the debt for the residents would be about one and a half percent. Okay, so this year we're looking at about 3.15 percent increase, Bobby? <coughs> when we get to that portion of the agenda, you'll see um, it's down to 3.01. 
Okay, so we're looking at about a three percent increase this year, and then your um, this would add another one and a half later. Um, I'm all for putting it up to the people, and and I do think it needs to be done. I'm a little skeptical whether it's actually going to get anywhere. The reasons are number one, it didn't pass last time. They're going to see the number. People are going to see the number. They're not going to see that it's two for one. The other thing is they're getting a 3% increase this year. And you're going to ask them to vote in to add another 1.5% to their tax rate in the future. All in the same year that you've got two fire districts that are in trouble. Well, one is back on track at getting there. And Western Coventry just asked for a 3% increase as well. So I am supportive of it. I am, and I am wanting the people to speak on it. I fully believe they should speak on it. I'm not sure to, this is the right time. That, that's, no, no, no. I say this in November. I'm not sure this is the right year to do it with a lot going on. And then we're also asking about putting, adding in the EMS part-time director. Uh, you know, there's just, just a lot of money that we're asking the taxpayers to cough up. And um, I would vote for it, but I, I just am a little skeptical that the people would. This is, this is I do think marketing was a problem last time. Well, also they were taking out a lot of the, uh, there were a number of folks that were upset that they were taking out a lot of those trees. You know, in that land that is adjacent to our parking lot, that a lot of that was going to be destroyed. And that was, a, that was another big thing. I don't know that it's ever a great time to ask for a tax increase. I know every three years we have to do different contracts. We have ups in taxes, so it's never great. So, so it'll be up to us to try to come to the town and say, hey, this is part of the strategic plan for the town. It's part, you know, our, our plan really can't be putting us into old school buildings. That's not a great plan either. We don't really want to do that. It's, to me, good money after that. We've taken a building that's 1960, maybe across the street. How old is the building there, though? That's around the same. We're talking about a complete gut to that building. It's two wings, and we're talking about building in between. So and it's one level. It's not 100,000 square <coughs> feet there that, that we would have to maintain. You're still gutting an old building, and you're still going to find things that, right. I mean, you will. That, well, so. I think the other thing is our building was much, much better maintained. One of the problems we had with Flat River is there were a lot of band-aids put on problems weren't corrected the way they were supposed to be corrected. So <clears throat> at Wood Street, they were corrected the way they should. Okay, that's, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lubosnia. Uh, uh, my question was, uh, you, you said that you'll, you'll apply for uh, federal grants, EMA grants. Uh, any, any idea or thought as to what kind and how much those grants might be worth? Well, there's a dispatch branch that East Greenwich got. But their dispatch center is about seventy-two thousand. Um, I think we would have to start looking. EMA Pat's actually a shelter, that big community building in the middle, so we could use that as sort of leverage for some EMA work. I think, um, but we don't have exactly what's going to look out there. Um, so we would have to go and search. But during the project, it's, it's two phases, so it'll give us some time to really dig in and call Senator Reed. You know, I think that bridge actually up, up on Sandy Bottom could use a little work too. So we would start to, yeah. you know, seek out legislative help maybe there as well. Yeah. To reduce the cost of structure. Yeah. Uh, I have to, uh, you know, echo the sentiment of uh, Mrs. Duxbury. Uh, uh, two years ago, it didn't, uh, you know, it, it, it was uh, with that in. I think that it's uh, it's going to be difficult for people to swallow. You know, I, th I mean, I, I know when we spoke before, we were just talking eight million, thinking maybe you know maybe that may be the area. But I understand, you know, when you're going to build something, it's going to cost X number of dollars to do it. Um, I'm I'm always for putting in front of the people and doing it. But we talked about a, a plan, uh, you know, again a strategic plan. Uh, should it go down? We're we going to do this every two years. I mean, uh, you know, we're going to you know, I, I mean. Uh, I, <laughs> I think we would look again. Our footprint at the peak is difficult to expand in. 
So I, I don't think we have room. Right I, 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 I know. I've, I, I've been in through the area. I've, I've had the tour, and, and it's very difficult. I just don't know if uh, uh, if the uh, your your, your uh, everyday ta working man, taxpayer, who's uh, you know worried about paying his bills, is uh, got his own problems, and he's not necessarily worried about the uh, the ins and outs of the uh, you know, those the, those particular problems. Uh, again, I, I'm all for bringing it to the people who don't vote. I think that uh, I think it deserves that, and uh, uh, I'm hopeful that maybe the people will see it. But I, I, I you know, I, I, in my in my mind, in my, I, I don't think that they will support it. Well, we won't know unless we try. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I guess that's the bottom yeah, line. There you go. I don't think you can just can, give in. Can, no, can, okay. it's not right. Beat it to death. It may pass. It may not. It's terrible. Uh, we need it's, help. Oh, we, we absolutely it's agree. And, and, again, and I think that the start of it, again, is laying your plan out and your marketing plan yeah. and showing the people, okay, this is, this is what the dollar values are. This is what it's going to be worth for our town going forward. And... Uh, uh, it's got to create a good vision for them to uh, to make a good decision for themselves. We're trying to make it a little bit of a value, a new yep. building, a rehab, and then yep. the same price, but it's actually less on the debt service now with a good interest rate. The weight, that interest rate decline, and it's really at all time low in housing, but in a couple of years, who knows where that interest rate goes, then it's even much higher. Because you know, I said you, at one and a half percent, you know, and then we'll be back at contract renegotiations on all fronts, you know, at the point that happens, and I know we're talking multiple percentage points at that point. Who knows if we can be able to get it, you know, any of these other regular increases into uh, into the tax level. Yeah. Okay. Let's give it a go. Yeah. That's it. Doesn't hurt to try. Yep. Uh, that's it. I guess thank you both for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, and next on the agenda, Mr. Waters, we have uh, another presentation, the Community Development Block Grant. Absolutely, and I think, uh, Mr. Sprague. Okay. And good evening to both of you. Good evening, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, members of the Council, Mr. Manager of the Business Service Center. Uh, we're here, and we're here this evening, and I say we um, made the Community Development Block Grant Coordinator, and Julie Luddy, in the background, who is a, uh, would be a recipient of, or uh, agency would be the recipient of funding um, through the Community Development Block Grant Program. And what we'll be requesting is that you uh, pass a resolution authorizing the uh, town manager to submit an application to the uh, state housing and community development um, agency uh, for uh, grant monies uh, under the CDBG program. By way of background, the, um, each year the United States uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development allocates funds amongst the various states uh, to assist low and moderate income families uh, or individuals. And um, in the past decade, um, probably because of the recession, that funding has uh, continually decreased. Although, fortunately, last year we were successful in um, getting a CDBG court. It was successful in uh, getting $508,000, uh, 400000 of which would go to a housing project for the Country Housing Association. And the, the way the process works is that um, the state uh, sends out uh, to the, the different cities and towns that are requests for um, applications for community development and block grant uh, app, uh, funds. And um, at that point, internally, um, Gail Harding, the CDB chief coordinator, will contact various nonprofit agencies, uh, including the very often, always really, uh, the Coventry Housing Authority and other agencies, uh, nonprofits, um, 
to determine uh, what, if any, um, funds that they are seeking for this particular year. And then, um, when that information is uh, gathered, uh, it's then submitted to the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commission will then rate the various um, matters that are uh, the various uh, applications and uh, then send a recommendation to the town council um, to uh, authorize the town manager to submit an application. Uh, this year, the, um, the, the, the planning commission um, so on April 27th uh, recommended to the council that uh, the following priority that um, number one that um, monies be allocated for the community housing authority for roofs for four buildings uh, involving 48 unit, units on Mulford and Drive which is on Buffalo North Road the um, this represents um, a portion of the buildings there, and it represents one half of what it would cost for the uh, roofing. The uh, Country Housing Authority would absorb uh, the cost of uh, the other half of these four buildings, and also would absorb the cost of uh, uh, several other buildings which it has there, which are in dire need of new roofs. Uh, second, the second rating, um, the second, really the uh, second priority that the planning commission recommended was housing rehabilitation for major repairs, and this is administered by the planning department, CDBG coordinator, and this involves. Um, uh, Repairs to roofs, gutters, um, downspouts, uh, windows, doors. <coughs> the um, the third that the um, third priority that the um, uh, any commissioner recommended was a uh, through the community housing authority, housing housing authority. I'm sorry. The uh, statewide centralized wait list. Um, the way it works now is that low and moderate income individuals will go to various um, cities and towns and submit applications. They may submit applications to all 39 cities and towns uh, to be put on a waiting list. This would, uh, these monies would go towards establishing a database so that uh, people could um, either punch in on their own computer or if they're um, computer illiterate, that, like I am sometimes, that they could uh, go to a local uh, um, housing authority and, and, and submit the uh, data or even come to our office. And the fourth is the uh, Community housing, um, first time uh, buyer down payment closing cost assistance. And this is to assist low and moderate income families in deposits and the uh, deposit towards a home and, um, and to uh, uh, offer closing costs or hand off and the total is $164,000 that um, we are uh, uh, seeking. Now, I believe all of you received a, uh, a packet of, uh, which is really basically like a PowerPoint presentation, which set forth these items. Um, and you won't see it this evening, you'll see it uh, because Bob is hard the uh, computer for the so. We, we do have it in front of us, Mr. Stroyman. What's that? We do have it in front of us. Yeah, okay, good. So, um, I mean, I can go through every single one, or if I... I don't think that's necessary. You know, let's uh, uh, be 
question of the council. Uh, the grand total is 164000 that you'd be applying for if we authorize that? That's correct. Okay. And uh, again, uh, just familiarize myself with this. Is that uh, you apply for the grant, uh, let's say you're successful in the grant. Yes. Uh, what additional monies have, uh, does it affect the town? I mean, is this no. money coming from the feds? The mo well, the all money comes from the feds. Right, that's, that's what I thought. Yes. So in other words, uh, all and, and we also have some monies that right. from Magic. prior years that okay. from the feds that can be utilized. Okay. All right. So this is basically just authorizing the town to ask for uh, apply for the grant. Precisely. Okay. I understand that. Uh, any uh, questions of, of the council, Mr. McGee? No, I, I love grants. I mean, it's, it doesn't have to right. go to cost taxpayer or anything. So it's, to me, it's a no brainer. I mean, I want to, if we can get all this work done, and it's not going to cost taxpayer. It's like a bull. I request the federal money. That's great. Mm. I was just going to ask uh, is there generally an amount where you'd stop asking uh, as to what you think with the other cities and towns and how much country might uh, be awarded? Uh, any. Uh, what, what do you call it? A Ouija board, eh? No, much is really driven by the um, nonprofit uh, agencies that come to the town, such as Country Housing Authority. Right. That's why Julie was kind enough at my request to come here this evening and take she any questions because uh, she's uh, would be getting the bulk of the money. And correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think the town has been pretty successful uh, in past years uh, with receiving yes. grants. Uh, I mean, that's a to me that's that's a, that's a plus. Um, I don't know if any council people have any questions of Mrs. Letty or Mr. Sprague or anyone. Go ahead, Mr. Yes. Wilson. I just um, I I I know I brought this up before the whole road map Rhode Island issue and. Not that I'm not, not that I'm against grants, you know that. And Julie, you know how I feel about getting as much as we can, but there is always a cost, and I really do think we have to look ahead to the roadmap for Rhode Island. It's not shelved, um, it's coming back. Mattiello brought it back, and there is a House bill right now, 7985, which has been referred to House Finance regarding low income. Have you seen this? Do you know where it's stand? I couldn't find anything today about it's where it's held for further study at this point. Oh, we all know what that means. Exactly. Yeah, because it said house finance, referred to house finance. It's been so, that's probably okay. definitely held for further study. Yeah, <laughs> but um, situation. when you're taking money from HUD and we're not meeting our low and mod in, um, requirements, well, what percentage are we at? We're at. Uh, that does not. Okay, the, I think what you're referring to is our requirement to have 10% right. or there. moderate housing. Okay. We have until 2025 to achieve that. Um, in two, 2005, um, late 2005, late in the year 2005, we had about 3.6% low and moderate income housing. We currently have about, the last report was 5.38%, but that will increase because um, we, we have some that have not yet to be built, have yet to be built. So um, as far as we stand, we stand uh, pretty high up uh, as far as being able being close to the 10% the most community. Those do not include Central Falls, West Wallet. Um, right, yeah. What's, what's that? I know, I mean. I, that, I think there's yeah. more of them that have already exceeded. Exceeded. That they, well, that, they exceeded that's what that this they bill would do. It would give you credits. You could buy, sort of buy their credits. So I just want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on roadmap. I had a call from one of our uh, reps today, knowing that she knew that this was coming up on on the agenda. So I just want to make sure that uh, I, I, mean, say I know that the ladies are keeping an eye on roadmap and uh, I will say that the planning commission on every application of any large subdivision looks at the uh, number 
of low modulus. Okay. And, uh, uh, and that urges developers to include that we do, do not have a requirement that they include um, low and moderate income. So that can be a um, somewhat of a tested legal matter. East Greenwich, uh, of East Greenwich imposed a penalty, uh, imposed a fee if you did not include sufficient or any low and moderate income housing. The Brown Supreme Court shot that down. Well, I mean, in East Greenwich, the feds came in and took some land and Please. made it low income. I mean, they can come in. I mean, they've done yes. it in Baltimore and other cities. I just want to make sure we're, you know, as long as the ladies know it, that. You, you, what it was at the time when this was, when it was enacted in 2005 was that at that time you had a certain period of time, which was a limited period of time, to either achieve the 10% or to um, come up with a plan. We came up with a 30-year plan, and the state said, no, that's not good enough. We'll limit you to 20 years to achieve your 10% um, um, mandate. Third paragraph. Um, oh, I see it. Yeah. You see it. Okay, so 
you'll have to scratch me out and find out who that might have been. Uh, basically, uh, I don't have any other questions of either of those minutes, to be honest. Does anyone else have any comments or questions regarding those two? Well then, um, I will have to abstain from the vote on the 25th. I don't know, do we do these separate that way or? Uh, all, all in favor of uh, approval of the minutes for April 11th. Need a motion. Uh, motion. Uh, all those, that's what I'm asking for. Uh, Move and do we have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of uh, the minutes of April 11th. Aye. 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 Okay, um, ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the April 25th meeting with the one correction. So okay, second? Second. Okay, um, those all in favor? Aye. 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 And I will abstain on that book, not being here. Okay, thank you very much. H. President's comments. Uh, I know we've been doing a good hour here. I, I just have a, a few. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to announce that uh, my wife, Carol, and I are, uh, are blessed with a new grandchild, uh, born on April 22nd, um, emergency C-section. So we, uh, we flew down at 6 a.m. on the 24th. Uh, long story short, uh, my granddaughter was born at the Naval Hospital at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, uh, Scarlet. Uh, three weeks early, but uh, the baby's doing well and my daughter's doing well. So um, that is why I wasn't in attendance at that one meeting that I've missed so far this term. The uh, second comment I have is uh, on Saturday, May 14th, from uh, 11 a.m. to 2.30, uh, we have... Uh, at the town annex, and correct me, Mr. McGee, if I'm wrong, uh, we have the Coventry uh, Compost Fest, which uh, will be Saturday, this coming Saturday on the 14th. And uh, uh, it's basically free uh, com composting uh, wood workshops, uh, raffle for uh, free compost bin, and uh, other good things to learn. Is that correct? It's still, still on? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, thirdly, also on May 14th, uh, Saturday, May 14th, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then uh, again on Sunday, May 15th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, and I know people, some people may have seen this, but uh, we're, we're having the um, fourth annual Revolutionary War reenactment and encampment over at the uh, General Nathaniel Green Homestead. Uh, 50 Taft Street, Coventry. Uh, the admission price, uh, $6 for adults, $4 for children. Uh, it's a $20 maximum per family if you uh, bring a lot of children and uh, two adults. So uh, I know I've attended in the past. Uh, hopefully the weather will uh, cooperate. Uh, whether or not cooperating, it'll go. Uh, it's something to see if people haven't attended that. Um, it's, it's really uh, something for kids to see. I know uh, they asked me to read at the middle school this uh, past month, and I pointed it out. I, I read uh, one chapter of the, uh, the book, uh, Rise and Fight Again, Nathaniel Green, and, and I asked him how many people had uh, visited the homestead. And out of uh, two classes combined, uh, probably at least 60 students, about four hands went up. I go, four? And to me, uh, I don't know if they've uh, gone other directions, but uh, it's something that all Coventry residents should see. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to go through the homestead, but to see this reenactment is, is really something. Uh, cannons are, uh, won't uh, go off and uh, wear ear protection if uh, you've got sensitive ears. But that said, I wanted to get that word in. Uh, lastly, uh, I know that it's been pointed out um, that... Uh, the town, um, from what I understand, has been successful. Uh, Parks and Rec and Library were getting that grant that they were waiting for. Uh, is that true, Mrs. Blanchett? Uh, that uh, successful for the tot lot? So I guess it's uh, in the works now. Is that correct? And that's a good thing. Uh, I love.